Hello everybody. Today we're making this mid-century modern TV stand slash bookshelf. I'm going to be using it as a bookshelf to match the mid-century modern bed we made a couple episodes ago. We're using two by eights and some basic techniques. I think in total this cost about $20. So let's get started. For this build, we're going to use two 2x8x12s. Two by by I think that's the length. But anyway, we need to glue the two boards together, so I marked the orientation I needed to cut, and then I started on the table saw. However, I quickly realized that these were just way too big to clean cut in one pass, so I broke each piece down into rough lengths. Then I went through and ripped all the boards down to rough thickness. The final pieces are going to be about 12 inches wide, so I kept plenty of extra space for now in case I need to make adjustments later. With those all cut up, I glued them all up. As you can see here, I tend to err on the side of using way, way too much glue. This is just so I don't get any gaps and I'm gonna be planing these down later so the extra glue is not really an issue. With the boards dried, I removed some excess glue with my chisel and I trimmed them down to about 12 and a half inches so that they would fit on my planer. I ran them through a few times to get them to about roughly one to one and a quarter inches thick. I used my crosscut sled to cut everything down to length. You could definitely use a range of tools for this, like a circular saw and a miter saw, but I like using my table saw when I can. It's just easier to sneak up on things in my opinion, and I can stack the boards pretty easily to do the second cut so that everything would be as precise as possible. You could definitely do this with other things too. This is just my preference. I also cut down a bunch of three by three inch leg blanks using a stop block. To cut the rabbits for the corner joints, I'm going to be using a dado blade. However, you can easily use a circular saw like this, or you'll see in a second you could use a router just as easily, among many other tools. So don't feel like if you don't have a dado stack, you can't do this. Generally, the data stack will give you pretty clean cuts, although my work surface really could be larger. You can see I have things clamped down here, and I actually didn't get as clean of cuts as possible. You'll see in a few minutes here, but it still turned out pretty good. With most of the work done, I cut everything down to final width. I'm using some basic tapering jigs to cut the legs. I started by drawing out the shape on the leg blank, then I lined up the cut line on the base of the jig, and then I just screwed in some support pieces and a hold down clamp. I just repeated the same process for the second cut. You can also buy uh, tapering jigs, which work really well. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. As I mentioned, my dado cuts were a little rough, so I cleaned them up with a compound flush cut bit from Channel Partner Bits and Bits. Check out their site for a range of fantastic bits and tools. I'll link in the description, but you can use code NBUILDS15 to save 15%. We're gonna use my biscuit joiner to join the inner vertical partitions to the top and bottom. However, you could probably get away with just gluing these on and clamping them, or use a cheap dowling jig like this one here. Thank you. 
I wanted to give the legs a bit of a round over on the sides, but I don't have a router table or an easy way to clamp them down. So I used this handy trick with painter's tape and CA glue to hold them tight while I routed them. I use Starbond CA glue, which is a channel partner. And if you're interested, check them out in the description and you can use code NBUILDS to save 10%. I know this sounds like a nice to have kind of thing, but honestly, since I've started using CA glue, there are so many applications that I use this for in woodworking and other places. Definitely worth the 10 or 15 bucks or whatever it is, so definitely check them out. Okay, on to the glue up. I only have a few larger clamps, so I did the glue up in a couple stages. As always, I made sure to clean up the corner glue squeeze out with a brush and a rag. If you've got any tips on how to manage glue squeeze out, definitely let me know in the comments. This is my most stressful slash least favorite part of woodworking. I'm gonna use some CA glue to stabilize a bunch of the knots in the wood. You could also use epoxy, but I tend to like CA glue for smaller applications because it's just a bit easier. You can work really fast and I find that it sands quite easily. I cleaned up the rabbits with a flush cut bit from Bits and Bits. Then I sanded all the joints flush. I used my router to cut some slots into the back of each cubby, which are going to hold the back panels. Then I used a round over bit to soften all of the edges. I'm going to attach the legs with dowels. I use this $10 jig from Amazon and it works surprisingly well. You just got to make sure you take your time and line everything up. I cut the dowels down to correct size, then I glued them all up and clamped them as best I could. I decided that I wanted to round over the back panels instead of squaring out the cutouts. This way the panels echo the edges of the piece, and I really think this is actually my favorite part of the project. I know it's a bit weird, but it's just the little things that are really satisfying. I used a scrap piece of wood to trace the corners, and then I cut down the excess. I used this board as a template for the panels, and I just clamped and routed them flush. Dropping these in there was surprisingly satisfying. Anyway, I used my brad nailer to attach these and I definitely went overboard on the brad nails, but I can confidently say that these boards are not coming out of there. And finally, I applied a coat of whitewash stain to match the bed we made earlier and a couple coats of water-based poly to finish things off. And with that, we're done. This was a really fun project to work on. All of the soft edges and subtle angles really give this piece a gentle look, which is what I was going for. I know it's made out of pine, which is kind of a junky wood, but there's a lot of little details that go in there. For example, filling in the cracks, the back panels, that kind of thing, that make this one of my favorite projects that I've made to date. My son also likes it. As you can see, he's using it for a bookshelf, but you could easily make this into a TV stand as is or adjust the dimensions a little bit and you would have something completely different. Anyway, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and I personally appreciate it. Thank you. 
Also, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. If you want behind the scenes content, check me out on Instagram and well, that's it. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode.